intelligence brings with it a promise of genuine human to machine interaction when machines become intelligent they can understand requests connect data points and draw conclusions they can reason observe and plan the field has a long history rooted in military science and statistics with contributions from philosophy um psychology math and cognitive science artificial intelligence originally set out to make computers more useful and more capable of independent reasoning with ai you can ask a machine questions out loud and get answers on screen or just conversationally uh how does this play out in the real world ai automates repetitive learning and discovery through data adds intelligence to existing products to improve the many technologies we use at home and in the workplace it achieves incredible accuracy for example our interactions with uh, alexa google search and google photos are all based on deep learning and they keep getting more accurate the more we use them in the medical field ai techniques form deep learning image classification and object recognition can now be used to find uh, cancer on mris with almost the same accuracy as highly trained radiologists um as i mentioned this is a subject in which we should all be deeply interested because in healthcare treatment effectiveness and um can be quickly determined in retail or uh, add on items can be quickly suggested in finance fraud can be prevented instead of just detected and so much more and now ladies and gentlemen i would like to introduce you to our speaker this morning uh, dr k rajshekar um deputy director general national informatics center who's going to talk to us on this most interesting topic that concerns our present and our future artificial artificial intelligence and machine learning dr raj shekhar is an award winning scientist currently functioning as founder and country head of center for data governance national informatics center ministry of electronics and information technology government of india telangana he has invented over 15 cost saving ict solutions in e governance he has architected and implemented several hyperscaling secure national level e governance solutions including the first aadhaar enabled payment system the first dbt application the first indian government blockchain solutions etc dr raj shekhar has won over 30 national and international awards for various initiatives in the information technology and communication sector which includes three national e governance awards by the department of administrative reforms and public grievances government of india and the only cto to receive twice the digital transformation leadership award in information technology he is also an presenter of research articles in national and international fora including in ieee and springo journals he has nearly 30 years of work experience in the information technology and communication field and gained several man years of domain knowledge in various sectors of socio economic development he has authored several key national e governance projects in health medical agriculture horticulture and allied sectors urban affairs grassroots development etc for the benefit of patients farmers nurses quality control officials women children students job seekers local bodies etc he's currently doing r&d in ai ml security blockchain iot enterprise mobility management big data analytics remote sensing and gis data governance local language computing biometrics etc ladies and gentlemen please join me in welcoming dr raj sekhar we are indeed grateful and honored by your virtual presence on our days over to you sir Dr. Raj Sekhar. Thank you, ma'am. Thank no you. Way. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you very much, 
for the MGIT management and uh, the faculty and also other uh, participants for uh, giving me this opportunity and uh, also giving a uh, very nice introduction. Sir, so, please enable your video. Yeah. So now, actually, uh, I'm sharing this screen. Uh, John, you kindly go to the next screen. I'll just go through uh, some of the uh, our ideas about uh, AI and machine learning. John, next screen, please. Uh, Renin, you are able to hear me? Uh, yes, sir. One second. One second. Uh, one second. Yeah, you have to be quick. Actually, uh, I'll be. Uh, or shall I share my screen? I. I think it's better, sir. If you can control, you can have control yourself. That's better. Actually, no. Uh, yes, sir. It's visible. Slides are visible, sir. Now. Full yeah, full screen is. Uh, uh, Full screen is visible, no? Uh, in the bottom top right, sir, there is a three dots are there, vertical dots. Just press that. Uh, there, uh, third one is uh, from top is uh, full screen. So you are able to see the screen, please? Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Visible. You are able to see, sir. Yes, sir, visible. Thank you. Thank you. So machine learning, there are some uh different varieties of machine learning supervised learning unsupervised learning reinforcement learning connectionist algorithms genetic algorithms concept learning exploration based learning transformation based learning case based learning my macro learning micro learning is also there evaluation functions cognitive learning architectures constructive induction and discovery systems and knowledge based systems there are actually uh, pro uh, predominant uh, uh, learning uh, types in machine learning and uh, in a in a typical uh, machine learning system, the while designing, we need to keep uh, taking the sir, sir, your PPTs are not changing, sir. Sir, or I'll get the PPT, sir. Okay, my PPTs are not uh, visible. They were not changing, sir. No, I'll you... just now I changed. Is it uh, has it changed? N no, sir. Sir, uh, sir, I think you are sharing the. Um, screen you have to share that uh, powerpoint show sir i am sharing sir sorry sir you can stop okay sir. because uh, okay i'm stopped because uh, yeah now it's fine sir because i am using the problem is with this uh, jitsi uh, i'm using wps office which is an open source and uh, sharing is a problem. If it is in the Windows MS Office, uh, then sharing will not be a problem in this Jitsi. So, anyhow, uh, next uh, next slide, please. Yeah, choosing the right experience is important. Uh, so, environment experience, uh, we have to choose exactly what to be learned. The target function has to be. Uh, we need to determine the target function and uh, we should also uh, represent the target function. That is actually the objective. And we should also choose an algorithm to infer the target function from the experience. A typical design of machine learning. The learning is has, has uh, these elements. Next slide, please. So the uh, different elements are the learning element, the performance element, the quality control element and the function generator. So these are the basic four elements and uh, learning element and based on the feedback, it will uh, modify the function and uh, it will be then function will perform and uh, then based on the uh, quality control elements inputs, then it will be modified. So this how these are the basic elements of the machine learning system. Any of the system, whatever 15 varieties, but the basic elements are these four elements. Next. 
so general model of a machine learning system same thing actually uh, here the quality control or the critic receives the sensors from the environment iot devices and a lot of other uh, external elements also can play a role or even human elements also can give inputs so that's how it actually responds to the environment so that is how a typical model of a, a machine learning system next slide please so the function representations of machine learning systems are numerical functions linear regression uh, and in which linear regression neural networks support vector machines symbolic functions decision trees rules in proposition logic rules in first order predicate logic instance based functions nearest neighborhood functions case based functions probabilistic graphical models naive base uh, bayesian networks for uh, fuzzy systems and hidden markov models probabilistic context free grammars and markov networks these are all the typical functions whatever functions we try to uh, represent they belong to this type uh, this categories next so search algorithm used in machine learning are basically gradient descent or perceptron or back propagation and also dynamic programming and uh, divide and conquer methods and uh, rule learning evaluation in computation genetic algorithms genetic programming and neuro evaluation these are all the different uh, types of uh, algorithms being used in the machine learning next slide please evaluation of machine learning there are empirical systems conducted controlled cross validation experiments to compare various methods on variety of benchmark data sets and also uh, gather data on their performance and test accuracy and training analyze the differences for statistical significance and analytical these are all empirical based on the experiments uh, that's what uh, we gather the information analytical is either computation mathematical or stochastic or fuzzy or even complex uh, combination of all these next slide please so uh, uh, supervised learning anyhow next slide next slide i'll just explain this later next disciplines relevant to the machine learning are artificial intelligence fuzzy methods control theory information theory mathematical complex theory philosophy psychology and neurobiology statistics many practical problems in engineering and business all these actually are a combination when we are developing a machine learning system we require knowledge of all this there only will be able to develop successfully a machine learning system next slide machine learning is a function approximation it is a regression classification categorization prediction and pattern recognition next slide please yeah so this supervised learning actually in a supervised learning we give the target also input is also known target is also known and based on that it uh, the function will perform uh, and uh, so it will be supervised or target is given based on the target it will be categorized so simply a classification or regression is a regression can be linear regression or non linear regression or polynomial polynomial regression these are the different uh, methods in supervised learning these are how we use next slide please in unsupervised learning uh, the target uh, uh, output is uh, we don't actually give unknown uh, output is given so we don't know and we in based on the input data it will be uh, based uh, does the cluster analysis or some such uh, algorithms it will do uh, it will and also it will uh, categorize so uh, there is no output outcome is not given and it will uh, determine the output so this is how unsupervised learning happens uh, so similarly it is used for categorization or uh, for uh, classification semi supervised learning in the semi supervised some are labeled and are some uh, are unlabeled the input to samples some are labeled and some are un, un, uh, unlabeled and it will be doing the classification so that is semi supervised uh, learning next slide the reinforced learning for example an apple is given and it may respond as a mango but uh, it is in fact an apple so we reinforce to the system this is not an apple uh, this is not a mango this is in fact an apple a in uh, any object of this size or this color or this type of thing it is an apple so that may reinforce the learning in the machine learning next slide. 
connection list methods in the connection list methods automatically the weighting uh, the weights are actually uh, induced into the hidden layers so that automatically the out output gets modified and uh, so that it will uh, reach the target uh, uh, function so that's how in the connection list methods basically this is being used in the neural uh, uh, networks so uh, automatically the connection weightages will change in order to, to determine the output next slide. in the genetic methods basically it is uh, actually we are learning from the genetic uh, uh, the biological genetic so uh, we take initially uh, we take the inputs and the uh, fitness assessment takes place and the selection and the, whichever is best fit it will actually survive and then uh, mutation takes place and uh, so this is how we will select the best samples actually genetic methods are useful for uh, because when uh, in, in the dimensionality reduction we wish to uh, take sometimes uh, reduce the dimension uh, this will be also used uh, next slide in the concept learning input data is given and uh, based on the input data the concepts and the hypothesis uh, presentation takes place. So uh, it is a sunny, if the sky is sunny and the uh, air temperature is warm and humidity is normal, then wind is uh, strong, then it is, uh, uh, the water is warm and then forecast is safe. So this is how, uh, if a air temperature is cold and the humidity high, then it is a good day for water sports. So similar, this type of hypothesis based on the uh, data can be actually uh, inferred. So that's how this is concept learning is. Explanation based learning. In the explanation based learning, a goal concept uh, is uh, given to improve the diagnosis. So basically, it is used in the in the medical field. So. Uh, Training example cases are given and the proof if it is actually below the threshold value then again we give an example to reinforce the outcome. So this is like a, uh, if the outcome is not up to the mark then we give actually a, a specific rule is introduced. So this particular ex explanation is given so that it will take least uh, time and risk computation resources to arrive at the uh, conclusion or objective function. Next slide. Transformational based learning. In this transformational based learning, training uh, basically uh, uh, we uh, we take into consideration the normal rules, rule templates, and in case if the system is not inferring at the correct answer then we induce the correct answer it is like a reinforced a type of reinforced learning only so correct answers are given and the learning rules enter uh, are modified excellent in the case based learning in the basically typically in the in the uh, health sector this type of uh, uh, learning methods are used and uh, patient present, uh, present data is collected and the hypothesis is generated because each case is different, unique in the case of medical and uh, in the biological field. So based on the test results, in case if this is a particular scenario, and uh, then uh, they try to uh, work out different uh, types of uh, medicines or, uh, for example, to for a drug, uh, drug discovery, they have to do a lot of trial and error. So, so based on this particular case, typical case, and uh, learnings are, uh, uh, the knowledge is acquired, and uh, then create a physical therapy evaluation and of the patient's movement or dysfunction or to address the uh, patient treatment. So uh, this how actually the case-based, case-based uh, case -based learning actually takes place. Next, next. Micro and macro learning. Actually, in a typical scenario, in a learning system, based on the rules and whatever actually we have discussed, the the system will try to gain the knowledge and also be trying to become an expert. And uh, after some time, it may reach some stage where the learning, if we uh, uh, 
micro minimum steps the learning can be induced so that it can become a expert otherwise it will be doing typical uh, functions like robotic process automation it will be doing a typical uh, simple functions only repetitive to functions but in case if you wish to evolve a, a system into an expert then we need to continuously induce uh, the knowledge that knowledge can be induced not in uh, in quantums but it might in small steps so based on the new scenario again the reinforcement we do and the uh, it system will uh, well uh, evolve and uh, improve so this how over a period of time the system becomes a perfect uh, perfect system or may it becomes uh, an expert system next slide. discovery systems especially in a drug discovery actually uh, we need to do 50 uh, we need to uh, for a to, uh, to determine a appropriate molecule uh, 50000 molecules are in a typical drug discovery they need to test so humanly it is not possible it is a costly affair so most of the uh, pharmaceutical industry nowadays they are using ai methods to discover the drugs so it will simulate and uh, based on the natural products and also based on the random screening and also known uh, legends it will actually uh, come out with uh, the better molecules so that's how the time gets uh, reduced and the cost gets reduced so this how actually the discovery systems are uh, learning systems are used in the drug discovery next slide learning from experts knowledge apart from all this the, uh, in spite of all this uh, uh, system sometimes the experts experts knowledge is uh, uh, has its own uh, role so we need to capture the information from the human experts and we need to update the system which may not be uh, in line with the mathematical stochastic or fuzzy or any other uh, models but uh, based on the experts knowledge uh, and the exceptions will be uh, induced into the system so that's how most of the systems in our days <coughs> they are crowd sourcing and based on the crowd sourced knowledge uh, the knowledge is being uh, uh, accumulated knowledge is being enriched and uh, based on that they are actually uh, de- developing the knowledge based expert systems next slide now next thing is talking to machine learning so that involves a deep learning and uh, which uh, are used for recommendations it means it will recommend it is not only uh, uh, classify or uh, determine a cause but it will also make recommendations in this scenario you need to make this type of investment so our evidence based it will actually uh, collect the evidence and uh, and it will also do descriptive analysis and it will also generate natural language it will generate natural language dialogues and also sometimes it may do some editing so this type of things are possible with the cognitive so this is the highest level of machine learning so after developing all this neural linguistic programming predictive analytics these are all actually the next higher level of machine learning systems are uh, will try to be near to the human beings so that's how the predictive analysis predictive analysis are going to be possible next slide so for that deep learning is also required in the deep learning normally the in the machine learning the feature extraction and classic uh, is done by the human beings and the classification is done by the uh, system in the deep learning systems the feature extraction and classification also everything is done so nothing we need to give, no need to give any input once we give an object it will determine its features and it will it based on its knowledge so that's how the deep learning is next slide. <clears throat> next slide please so in the in uh, in the uh, in the deep learning we use in our days in, in, in uh, increasingly the multi layered neural networks so uh, these uh, 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 these networks are being used and uh, computation speed also required now we are actually able to 
get uh, GPU based systems and CPU based systems, its computation speed also has increased. So, though the theory of neural networks is uh, uh, don't care old, but it is now gaining pro uh, prominence. And a lot of uh, cloud based uh, neural networks as a service. So, these uh, platforms are nowadays available. So, without much coding, also we can actually uh, do uh, experiment and also build the AI based systems. So, that's how these are present uh, stage. Next slide, please. Uh, this is one actually uh, deep learning and uh, uh, one example is the uh, driverless cars. Now that became a reality. So they will be able to detect the moving uh, objects and also stationary objects and also the path and navigation and if you determine you just you have to feed in the destination it can drive. Next slide. So in this uh, uh, deep learning and cognitive systems the back propagation uh, error is uh, also this is one important element in developing the deep learning systems. So based on the uh, uh, error uh, between the target and also the actual outcome of the system, feedback is given and in the real time it will correct itself. So it may not uh, hit a uh, human being. So that type of things are important in the uh, similarly, in the military or in a, in another uh, in industrial robotics, this is actually in the, these are actually are being used. In, uh, next, now for testing the AI systems, the testing methodology is uh, manual testing. In early 80s and 90s, we used to have a manual testing and bulky automation tools used to be used. Now, more robust automation tools, so open source frameworks were used in 2002, 2010, and more uh, DevOps and continuous testing. Now, nowadays, collaborative smart testing and autonom uh, autonomous uh, testing, machine learning, and AI are being used for even for testing the AI systems. So, this is how actually evaluation is taking place. Even to test the AI systems, also, we require AI systems. So there are frameworks and uh, metrics are actually are being defined. So next slide. Please. This uh, now actually uh, we need not have we need not nowadays uh, do a lot of coding, and a uh, lot of tools are available. Most of the tools what actually I'm going to present are open source, freely available tools, and uh, click of a button they can actually we can download them. Some of these tools are Veka, Apache, Spark, Emily, Web. Uh, Minor H2O, AI, Shogun, Nine. So these are uh, some of the tools. Uh, we we'll just uh, uh, touch upon each of these tools. Uh, next slide, please. TensorFlow toolkit hierarchy. TensorFlow is actually a cloud-based machine learning engine which has a library of uh, it, and it can work on a CPU or also. A GPU or a TPU or a or all Android platform, and it has a library uh, in C plus plus or Python, and uh, nowadays uh, it is being uh, used. You mean that? Uh, so the high level APIs uh, for uh, training are available, and uh, so this is actually APIs are readily available, and you need not uh, do anything. You have to call the APIs and uh, use in your system to make your system intelligent. Next. Now, actually, one typical example, uh, disaster watch, uh, earthquakes, in a real time, this is a system in place, earthquakes are applied or explosion or hurricane or tornado or bombing or actually all these type of uh, uh, disasters are being uh, watched or monitored and uh, depicted in the real time on uh, in the map. So this is a typical disaster watch system in place in the world right now. And uh, next slide. Now here, uh, for uh, that disaster watch uh, to building, uh, for, to build a, such a disaster watch system, seismographs or IoT based systems or uh, or uh, such uh, physical sensory systems are not there, not installed in different parts of the world because that is a costly proposition. What actually, we, uh, how they build the disaster watch system is based on the uh, text earthquake, earthquake in Mississippi. Uh, no damage reported. This is one uh, feed. And the tornado on uh, Sunday, August uh, at 11 o'clock, 
uh, quick update with this uh, previously tornado one storm a funnel cloud was spotted as it was into Katawanda County and about 30 minutes ago but the rotation has passed so these Twitter and other such social media feeds small textual tech content the block of this help in this level <coughs> let's let so what is actually happening is uh, the Twitter feed based on whatever uh, people they do a lot of tweeting whenever an event occurs even a natural disaster event occurs the Twitter feeds actually there will be explosion of the Twitter feeds and the district uh, the text process uh, text parsing has been done and after that uh, they also from which location it has occurred and what is that uh, content what are the keywords based on that it is basically uh, whatever feeds are coming from the Twitter Twitter so this uh, disaster watch was built and uh, node.js is there, explode.js is there, stream.js is there, tensorflow is there and climate. So based on the Twitter inputs and also uh, JavaScript based uh, these simple tools, this uh, disaster watch has been uh, built, whatever actually I have shown. Next slide. TensorFlow privacy, actually TensorFlow as I told is uh, a cloud-based uh, library uh, a platform for machine learning and uh, nowadays UGDPR is uh, described as some standards for ensuring the privacy of the individuals. So whatever data is there in order to ensure the privacy in the TensorFlow privacy uh, is also now uh, is, uh, available. So what it does, it will uh, hide the private data uh, personally identifiable information of the individuals. Next slide. Veka Explorer is uh, another uh, machine learning uh, classification and also presentation tool, uh, open source tool available. And uh, a lot of data can be actually fed and we can actually do uh, classification and also analysis and also info knowledge as well as uh, presentation. Next slide. Shogun is another tool and uh, which facilitates support uh, us to build the support bank, uh, vector uh, functions and uh, missions and also diamond and they are basically used in dimensionality reduction algorithms. Uh, such as a principal component analysis or kernel principal component analysis and also for uh, hidden Markov models k nearest and neighbor uh, uh, neighbors so linear discriminant analysis kernel or subtron so shokan is an open source freely available tool which can facilitate us to do uh, clustering or uh, to build the uh, we need to develop any algorithms we can use the tool for clustering or for uh, uh, building those uh, models, machine learning models. SkyKit <coughs> Learn is another uh, open source tool and uh, available in C++, Python, and also other uh, uh, languages. Uh, libraries are available. It enables us to do classification, clustering, regression, and dimensionality reduction. This is also another uh, tool for machine learning. And uh, basically, uh, for scientific data, like in the chemical or uh, physical experimental data, this type of thing, uh, scientific data for uh, managing, processing, and for uh, inferring, this uh, style kit is being uh, predominantly used. Next slide. A part of is a .NET uh, framework-based machine learning tool. What it does is it can uh, process a lot of huge volumes of textual data as well as uh, images data or audio content or video content. So all types of content can be taken. And uh, two, three photographs, uh, if you are taking, uh, let's say, uh, two, three photographs in a scene, and it can actually paste and create a big, bigger photograph, and it will... Uh, eliminate the redundant uh, portions uh, so that about thing uh, is one thing here is an example so here in the right side some print was not visible so it has combined and got two three photographs so uh, accord is a dot framework based uh, uh, a uh, machine learning uh, tool 
for building the AI system. Mohot, Apache Mohot is another uh, platform freely available and uh, it can be based on Hadoop HDFS uh, database and also it can be used for clustering, classification and also determining the recommendations and the uh, H2O can be plugged into that and the Spark also can be plugged into it. So a lot of uh, map. So this is another uh, famous and uh, machine learning uh, platform of Apache Mohot. Uh, which uh, is freely available and uh, it is even used. Next slide. Uh, uh, Apache Spark machine learning uh, platform is uh, a faster uh, tool and also we can, uh, uh, it is a faster and uh, we can uh, use it uh, for uh, uh, determining the life uh, in the real life model. For example, for building a system, let us say in a, in a toll gate, uh, in the real time, nowadays people, uh, the vehicles are being given a, 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 a QR code or a, uh, some other identity tag. So at a, at a high speed vehicles which are coming in, without stopping the vehicle, they determine whether the vehicle has uh, paid the toll uh, tax every year and uh, how, much account, how much is there in the account and in case it uh, is uh, to it has to pay something then it will vehicle will be stopped automatically otherwise uh, it will allow the vehicle to pass so such type of systems require in the real time injunction of data from several sensors and in the real time the system has to determine and uh, take a decision and uh, alert the toll gate uh, personnel or the toll gate uh, gate to get closed or opened so this type of systems are actually in the real life are being uh, built using this apache spark machine learning platform and also core h2 is also another uh, open source based uh, uh, platform and uh, python uh, and also it can coexist with other uh, uh, tools and uh, hdfs and uh, hbase or uh, uh, SQL or any other databases also can uh, feed the data into it and it can work with uh, Java also. So this is another uh, open source based uh, platform. Next slide. Cloud Era OX is also is, uh, promoted by Google uh, and uh, it is also another uh, platform for uh, machine learning and uh, for doing whatever functions, regression, analysis, clustering, and uh, uh, build, uh, using the net, uh, developing the artificial neural networks. Next slide, please. Even in JavaScript also, some tools are developed. Next slide. Next slide. Yeah, PyTorch uh, is another tool. Uh, basically, uh, it is uh, uh, it does uh, mainly the mining on the textual data, and uh, so word look up table, embedded bag, and linear output. So basically, for processing huge volumes of the textual content, uh, PyTorch is being used. Next. Uh, Convenient this is a JavaScript based uh, machine learning tool and uh, so this also does but it is a, it is a lightweight and uh, purely based on the JavaScript not, uh, we need not uh, know uh, Python or R or C++ or Java it is basically simply based on JavaScript Next slide. so TensorFlow uh, is another uh, Already we have discussed Keras and uh, TensorFlow. Keras is another tool and it can coexist with uh, TensorFlow and also R right, as a combination of this. Usually, actually, each tool has its own strengths and uh, weaknesses. So, note we to build a robust system, we use a combination of the tools. Next slide. K9 is another tool and it can facilitate data access, transformation, analyze and data mining, visualization and deployment. Jupyter is a 
uh, is another open source tool and uh, we can actually uh, jupyter notebook we can uh, create uh, the libraries are also available uh, for machine learning in r and python and also other uh, java so this jupyter uh, can coexist with uh, spark and other uh, other uh, platforms and uh, it is also open source uh, source based and uh, we can uh, like in a typical notebook we can store our content and also do our processing next slide. so these are some of the tools famous around 15 16 tools all tools are available and they are freely available and open source based and with few hours of uh, uh, experimentation we can just download and we can build a, a machine learning uh, system nowadays so that's how actually people are nowadays able to build without much efforts uh, without uh, spending much resources also this machine learning uh, systems ai systems and uh, there are some issues which uh, we need to so nowadays developing a system is very easy but uh, while developing a system we need to take into consideration uh, some important factors typically for example uh, this is a uh, fingerprint other enable the public distribution system next time uh, somebody uh, uh, next slide please yeah so in other uh, uh, enable the payment system that is, that is uh, what is your thing is uh, a person can uh, put his finger pick because in the cashless during uh, the monetization in india what we worked out is a uh other enable the payment system so that without a credit card or without a debit card or without a uh, net banking or mobile wallet one person will be able to to do uh financial transactions just by uh, putting his finger and authenticating a transaction so that uh, through his other linked bank account the money can be transferred to the the person to whom he wish to make payment so this is how other in payment system is there but typically in uh, one of the example where a person has uh, taken from this uh, registration data in the registration data in number and telling on what is happening is people are actually putting their fingerprints and these are all also available and uh, under rt has made as things are been made public and uh, transparent so that a person who is may or may wish to buy a property may wish to know the real owner of a property so they can they can download uh, and purchase a property document by spending 200 rupees so this one person what is actually happened in current mega district he has spent 200 rupees and uh, he has downloaded his documents in the doc in the documents uh, he is able to get the aadhaar uh, fingerprint uh, the aadhaar number as well as the fingerprint of the buyer and also seller and two witnesses so what he has actually done uh, he has actually taken the fingerprints and the so on the fingerprints yes uh, uh, using photoshop he has uh, converted the fingerprints into the uh, the negative and negative using the polymer printer he has printed he has prepared the gloss so then he is able to uh, with that uh, he is able to what he has done he has he, Uh, given uh, sims because uh, nowadays for ekyc we are using aadhar authentication to purchase the sim we need to we earlier we used to fill up the forms nowadays uh, they are actually putting a finger and uh, with the aadhar the authentication happens immediately they are actually within 10 minutes they are able to get the sim so he used to he has uh, 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 sold those sims with uh, uh, to typically uh, without any ekyc so if Uh, that means the criminals usually they don't want to identify themselves they will to put your sim and on fictitious on some other person name so he has sold uh, sims and uh, that he will get if normally if you are selling a sim you may get 50 rupees or uh, something and in case so without the uh, kvc if you are selling he will get some 200 or 300 so simi- uh, so what i meant to say is <coughs> this fingerprint uh, data private data and uh, other information which we are capturing with uh, this all our uh, systems we should ensure security and also privacy otherwise it will lead to 
uh, because author authentication we are using biometric recognition and uh, facial recognition systems but uh, ultimately uh, we should ensure the security privacy confidentiality also next slide so this how actually has uh, uh, created uh, based on the fingerprints uh, the artificial fingerprints next slide. another is actually uh, this amazon recognition is another facial recognition uh, software amazon has actually developed that uh, 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 machine learning system and uh, this typically recently uh, for uh, detecting the immigrants uh, from the us government has used and what it has done because of the false matches it has actually uh, unable to but detect a person is a child because in case because in, uh, those uh, persons who are trying to immigrate from some countries uh, the government has actually quarantined them or they actually uh, imprisoned them. so it is not able to distinguish whether he is a particular child or not so they have used uh, that uh, immigration department us government they have used another recognition as a result uh, even children who are not supposed to be imprisoned also were imprisoned so next slide another important thing is uh, this uh, facial recognition also is another bit and another is being used increasingly and uh, uh, because i told the, the drawbacks of the fingerprint because the fingerprint if you are presenting from the partial fingerprint also full fingerprint can be uh, can be computed and uh, next uh, uh, next uh, thing is we are able to uh, so in order to avoid the problem facial recognition actually we are trying to introduce facial recognition in our uh, government transactions uh, so <clears throat> in the case of facial recognition uh, this is one example where uh, typically from the social media images the face uh, photographs are taken and from those photographs uh, a full blown Uh, actual photographs are reconstructed. I think uh, somebody is sharing. Uh, yeah, please. Yeah. So, sorry, somebody is sharing. Uh, I think I request them to stop sharing that uh, slide. Stop now. Hello. Yeah. So. from the uh, photographs that are available in the social media they are taken and uh, they are able to uh, develop a face and uh, to the webcam or to the uh, fingerprint recognition system instead of showing the human face they are able to show the photograph so then what has actually happened that the uh, machine learning systems were able to uh, they uh, what actually what they are doing is develop a 3d uh, instead of uh, taking only a 2d so we have developed the systems to determine whether it is a, a 2d image or a 3d uh, image so if a human being exist a three dimensional face will be there so in, so in order to distinguish a, a photograph from a real uh, person so this 3d element that's how most of the cameras also nowadays having uh, two uh, cameras so these two cameras will be able to capture the three dimensional view of the uh, of the photo then it will be able to determine it is a, 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 a photograph or a real human being but now what is actually happening is this systems based on the uh, social media uh, images a full photographs are built and uh, those film photographs also using some model 3d modeling construction the 3d image also being captured and also a video is also being captured to simulate a human being a, a real human being so we are trying to build the systems and uh, but on the other hand people are also trying to hackers or others are also trying to build the systems to uh, overcome the security uh, restrictions so this is another important thing so uh, so you see if, if you are talking about a real face then uh, they will also 
are building the three dimensional images and we are trying to <coughs> recognize uh, based on the eye blinking so they will also facilitate eye blinking so a human being we say okay now blink the eyes then we say blink the eyes system will prompt you to blink the eyes in order to determine with a real face or a uh, or a uh, uh, image so this 3d graphics based systems are being built even to make that system blink the eyes so we need to develop much more robust systems uh, this is another thing uh, dog or a cake a, a, the system a system can easily get confused uh, to determine which is really a dog or which is a cake so this is how we need to actually uh, build systems which are little bit more uh, robust and uh, can uh, be more accurate next slide another important thing is in uh, one year back uh, the company in uk lost uh, 220000 pounds uh, how it happened this uh, a deep it actually the a systems were developed uh, to mimic the voice of a, the ceo of the company and the ceo ha, and the, uh, the manager has received a phone call to transfer this much amount to a, to a company in holland and uh, immediately he thought okay the call has come from his boss and he has uh, paid the amount and after some time another call has come uh, from the boss and this time it has come from another uh, austria and uh, then he told him to pay transfer another amount then he got suspicious uh, this call has come from different uh, country austria so then he uh, has raised an alert and they could uh, then uh, the scam has come out so nowadays using ai people are able to develop uh, systems so based on the voice samples lot of uh, we are speaking and we are actually whatever we are speaking in the in the lecture or in the public domain all those based on the recordings the voice accent and also the typical jargon what we use and uh, so this behavior voice behavior is imitated and we can build the systems to make a phone call or to give a speech to do so this is another big threat to nowadays the world is facing and uh, really it has actually happened and another also this is another case also happened in a similar manner in uk where actually a person has paid some amount uh, and the other side it, uh, it, they have used a tools to mimic the voice of their boss to make some payment next slide deep fakes actually uh, this is another example of deep fakes uh, in the social media profiles artificial profiles are created and also not only the photographs in the even the video uh, clippings are also apart from that uh, all this actually is a big threat nowadays uh, so this is another so we need to uh, develop systems to determine the uh, real uh, feeds from the uh, that uh, the fake or uh, other such uh, attempts next slide this is another notifier the tools are, are, are available just uh, you just download and you can just in, take any photograph and it will just notify this is uh, i think uh, of course this is another big threat uh, nowadays uh, so next slide and uh, in uh, in the march 2018 in uh, arizona uh, a driverless uber car had in the night has killed one pedestrian she was trying to cross the road and the driverless car has hit her and uh, the person has died so this driverless vehicles while developing the driverless vehicles especially in the high uh, in the highways so we need to build much more robust uh, systems to ensure uh, safety basically. in the case of driverless vehicles what are actually the pitfalls are uh, it may not be able to distinguish it may not be able to distinguish uh, between uh, 
uh, a construction worker and uh, uh, also uh, people wearing dark clothes may not be able to uh, uh, we may not be able to distinguish them from the darker backgrounds and also they the children also they actually systems are built based on the feedback from the adults and also during sun glaze the images will be different so all this type of typical scenarios we should be able to take into consideration let's look at this this is another actually a uh, few days back microsoft tried to uh, uh, substitute the human editors of the microsoft network with uh, a, a editor but uh, typically instead of using this uh, uh, left photograph the editor has picked the uh, right photograph uh, right side photograph of another singer like uh, so this is a, so then uh, they abandoned the idea of using a, a, a ai editor for editing their uh, their publications next slide. so actually it is uh, digital assets management so to avoid all this we need to have digital assets management systems sir you have un you have to unmute your mic sir your mic is muted yeah so uh, digital assets management is another important thing so to build a robust and accurate systems we need to whatever the content we are uh, getting uh, the quality of the content and also the, uh, the volume of the content also determines the outcome of the uh, uh, systems and uh, next slide please archiving actually this content we need to manage in such a way so that uh, it will be it should be curated and it has to be made uh, reusable and uh, next slide please uh, ensure availability appropriate content should be available for the mission learning and also for inference because if uh, some uh, if wrong decisions are taken if a, if a mission learning system about a portfolio you are trying to invest something and uh, it may give some advice in case if the decision is if, if you are incurring loss then who is answerable who is accountable so these are some ethical issues and judicial issues these are some of them so another important thing is data disposition private uh, data whatever we are collect collecting should be disposed safely and uh, it should and uh, decency data, data only should be made accessible next slide please and the validity and reliability validity because it may be valid but it may not be reliable so what is valid and it should be valid and reliable in order to uh, uh, for uh, mission learning next the data whatever we did use and the privacy as i have been telling privacy has to be ensured uh, in whatever uh, system we build and whatever data we collect and manage next slide so these are all uh, apart from building while well, building the uh, machine learning system we have to ensure proper data governance and uh, so creation of legal uh, digital framework is important rules responsibilities functions liabilities are to actually uh, we, I mean, we need to uh, clearly define and uh, next slide. So this uh, while building the data uh, uh, machine learning systems, we require a lot of data, and also even uh, even if some robotic process or some system uh, robotic process automation systems or AI systems, but uh, it may not require a lot of data. But uh, but still, but still they require. Uh, Uh, but still they require uh, accurate data to ensure, uh, ensure uh, legal, a proper legal framework so that uh, whatever decisions uh, the systems may take uh, will be somebody should be made uh, answerable so what we need to do is we need to ensure the person who are uh, before accepting the system we should actually ensure the functionary who is performing the functions and uh, should take uh, account of it and should uh, test it thoroughly and ensure uh, 
that the systems when they perform uh, perfectly and they comply to the legal rules regulation then only they should accept and uh, the human being somebody some functionary should be made uh, accountable and responsible that means that the systems who are once whether a developer of the system will take responsibility or the implementer of the system will take responsibility so that actually we need to uh, work out uh, these issues also while uh, developing the systems so this is what actually and another important thing is in in india we have a lot of 120 languages a lot of content is available in so many languages and we need to build the systems uh, which can process data in uh, local languages also so that uh, uh, our systems will be much richer otherwise we'll have only built uh, using systems in uh, where data processing happens only if the content is in english then actually we are limiting our uh, scope and also our uh, potential so these are some of the thoughts i wish to uh, share next slide please yeah so this thought i thought of uh, sharing my thoughts on this uh, subject and uh, if any uh sir chance or any queries i welcome thank you thank you sir we have a few queries from the participants so one uh, question from uh, participant he is from uh, anamala university so yeah. in medical image processing so which uh, learning is uh, appropriate whether it is micro learning or macro learning this is the question sir in uh, uh, in medical image processing uh, basically uh, we because uh, when we are building uh, uh, what we call image image geology so mri mri nowadays uh, uh, the mri scan is the ultimate scan it actually uh, if you get an mri scan it is like slicing a human body into pieces and uh, visualizing so earlier x rays or ct scan used to be there ultrasonic scans used to be there now mri has come so in this uh, actually uh, we require see macro is uh, uh, micro learning is uh, macro learning is a subset of so micro learning will be there but what we require is a mic, uh, macro learning a learning over a period of time because each human being is different and each human anatomy is different and uh, typically the systems are built uh, based on the information what we gather actually while uh, doing, uh, so for image geology what they do is they create sensors in 360 degrees and also receptors in 360 degrees and based on the data whatever they collected over a period of time or different uh, human bodies or uh, other uh, living bodies or whatever may be they have built the systems but uh, i think continuous learning is important and uh, actually we are trying to see for example nowadays need of the hour is even Now, uh, most of the uh, under PCP NDT Act, and uh, because uh, if you see the gender ratio, it is uh, going down heavily, and in urban areas, uh, it is uh, the ratio is uh, the ratio of thousand uh, male births to the thousand female births is eight uh, hundred or even nine hundred also in some locations, and the ratio is uh, very uh, distorted in. Uh, Uh, urban areas affluent societies especially in areas where the diagnostic centers the scanning centers are there so we need to build a scanning systems where it will not uh, show the gender signs it will obscure so i feel uh, we require uh, macro systems which will be built with the micro knowledge incrementally gained over a period of time thank you sir one final question so how ai and machine learning are helping to tackle present covid 19 situation sir actually uh, in the present covid situation in india uh, we are uh, build aarogya setu nic has built in collaboration with uh, others uh, aarogya setu app and uh, what is actually happening is right now it is based on the uh, bluetooth uh, data uh, those who are using smart phones uh, if uh, they are in the proximity it will generate an alert and in case of so bluetooth based uh, contact tracing system is is used in in this 
and apart from that in case if a person who has come in uh, apart from that we are also collecting data from the feature phone because 40 to 50% of the uh, citizens are using feature phones so from the cell towers the data is also being captured and in case if a particular person has moved to a zone which is a red zone then he is a potential uh, uh, covid uh, prospect to uh, 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 he may get uh, that uh, so this how this information from the cell towers and also from the bluetooth uh, track uh, information alerts are being generated and uh, that is being rendered uh, specially to and uh, we have created dashboards to all the functionaries at the district level and state level and also at the national level so these functionaries they are in the control room they are able to track so if somebody has moved from a red zone or a particular person who is uh, in close proximity to a covid positive patient has moved to another place then alerts can be generated and uh, in the in kerala in some uh, states they have effectively used these alerts to uh, quarantine the persons and also to track the persons and collect the samples so ai and machine learning can facilitate contact tracing that is one and another important thing is because people are nowadays are talking about a uh, uh, lot of uh, methodologies ayurveda or homeopathy because uh, but uh, we don't have conclusive evidence to show now based on the cloud source the information uh, people can actually treat their symptoms and also after giving them after taking the medicines uh, how uh, the situation has improved those uh, so this will facilitate in a big way in a, this can be viewed as an opportunity for us to uh, use machine learning and also come out with the protocols and also prescriptions for uh, managing this type of uh, pandemic another is we have actually used earlier uh, this uh, ai tools and spatial analysis tools also to predict the potential zones today for example disease is affected at this zone and tomorrow how it is going to spread so that type of uh, so that uh, before it gets spreads then uh, uh, quarantine measures and other such uh, social engineering uh, 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 rules and uh, regulations that the government can impose so this how for quarantining and containing and also for the drug discovery and also to ensure patient safety also uh this uh, ai and machine learning can be used thank you sir now i request uh, professor crk sir propose what of that crk so, sir over to you thank you thank you raju uh, thank you dr uh, rajshekhar sir uh, for uh, enlightening us and uh, our uh, audiences and in fact you have taken us through the uh, inception right from inception of machine learning and machine learning algorithms the differences between supervised and unsupervised algorithms onwards to the data data, data science now how it has this data has evolved into knowledge and how now it has become a science and what are the various tools and applications tools that are available on the net and uh, how to integrate these tools to take the best of the uh, various tools and build a particular hybrid system and to apply this particular uh, tools into the real world problem and at the same time you have also cautioned us to take uh, care of the privacy issues as uh, as happened in the case of a i mean a pilotless vehicle where uh, one particular person got uh, hit of course that might be much much less compared to the number of accident rates and i also i mean uh, heard or read that sir uh, like uh, the number of accidents are much much in the throughout the world they are much much higher compared to the covid uh, death rates that doesn't mean i mean uh, i mean that's one of the positives we have to take it into consideration and uh, i would like to i mean in fact uh, we are uh, very glad sir to have a knowledgeable person and uh, like you uh, with us to associate with us and i would like to thank you profusely from our mahatma gandhi institute of technology and from my technical team and all the persons thank you very much uh, general sir thank you very much thank you